The cross-references feature in Affinity Publisher allows you to create references that refer the reader to elsewhere within your document. You can use cross-references to support critical writing by providing additional information or giving deeper insight on a topic to your reader. For instance, I have here a cookbook that I've been working on, and my editor has asked me to insert a number of cross-references within the book to make it easier for readers to navigate to related recipes. So to begin, I'll start by locating the cross-reference panel by going to Window, scrolling down to References, and selecting Cross-references. The cross-reference panel will appear, and the panel will display all of the references shown within our document, allowing us to manage these references effectively. At the moment, we only have a single reference within our document, so let's start by adding some cross-references into the forward. The forward references three different recipes in the cookbook. I want to use the cross-references function to create links to these related recipes. Specifically, I want to include information about the page on which these recipes can be found. I'll find where I want to insert the reference and select any text I want to replace with the new cross-reference field. In this example, I'm going to select the placeholder page number text and the surrounding words. With the text selected, I'll navigate to the cross-reference panel and select the Insert Cross-Reference button. The dialog can be separated into two sections. The first three options we have allow us to search for and allocate a reference that we want to target. The other options on the dialog allow us to generate or enhance the reference itself using subfields and character styles accordingly. The first reference that I want to target is relating to the killer chicken korma recipe found on pages 6 and 7. So I'll make sure that the link to drop down is set to paragraph. And by choosing paragraph, this will allow us to target any written information within the document. We can then choose to filter the paragraph options, reducing the number of potential targets we have by filtering our text options by text style. Specifically with this example, I want to target the recipe titles. So I'm going to filter the text styles to show entries that only use the text style 01 title. If I was targeting an instance of text that was part of the body text, I may now need to use the search options to again reduce the number of entries that I could target. However, as I'm targeting title entries for my reference point, it's quite a simple matter to scroll through the options I have and just select the killer chicken korma entry. I can now begin to use a combination of written text and subfields to start generating my reference. By default, when first opening the cross-reference dialog, the text input option will contain a single page number subfield. We can select the subfield and interact with the subfield arrow. We can then choose to replace the subfield with any of the available options. I want to generate a reference that uses the page number subfield, so I don't need to replace the field. I will, however, insert my cursor before the page number subfield and type the words found on page. We could also choose to override the character text style. A classic example of this would be to use the emphasis character text style and this would indicate to the reader that this is, in fact, a reference and not just normal body text. It's worth also mentioning, though, that using the character style override will affect the entire reference, not just the individual subfields. Once I'm happy with my reference format, I could choose to save the format as a preset. To do this, I'll select the menu and choose Create Preset. I'll name the preset 01 Found on Page and then click OK. The document I'm working on, though initially designed to be printed, is also going to have a digital version. As such, I want to make sure that the Generate Hyperlink option has been selected, enabling easy navigation for digital readers. Once I'm happy with my settings, I'll then go ahead and click OK. This will automatically generate the cross-reference, inserting it into the text frame as a field. Selecting the cross-reference on the cross-references panel, I can select the Go To Target option, and this will automatically navigate us to the references target. As you can see, we've been transported to the killer chicken korma recipe that we targeted in our first cross-reference. Providing the reference is still selected, we could then choose Go To Cross-Reference to navigate back to the original cross-reference. With our first cross-reference now in place, and our preset now saved, we can quickly run through the rest of the forward, generating any additional cross-references we may need. So, again, I'll select the text I want to replace as a cross-reference field, go to my cross-references panel, 
and click the Insert New Cross-Reference button. This time I'm looking to target the classic Italian lasagna recipe. As the title uses the same 01 title text style, we can leave the search option set to Paragraph and 01 Title. I'll then scroll down until I find the classic Italian lasagna and select it as my target. I'll also take advantage of the preset I saved last time and make sure that we have the 01 found on page preset option selected from the preset dropdown. I can then simply click OK and this will now replicate the same format we used on our previous reference. I'll repeat the process one more time on our third and final reference in the forward. So I'll select the text I want to replace and click the Insert New Cross-Reference button. And locate the Korean fried chicken title as my target. Again, we'll make sure that we have the 01 found on page preset selected. However, this time, I think I'll make a change to the wording of the preset slightly. So I'll edit the text to read See On rather than Found On. Notice that the preset now has the modified keyword next to it to show that it has been edited and is no longer the original preset. I could choose to save this new preset, overwriting the original preset we made, or I could choose to create a new preset if I desired, if I wished to reuse this throughout my document. However, in this case, I think I'd just select OK to generate a new cross-reference. And there we go, we've now generated three cross-references within our forward. For the next example, I'm going to show you how to edit an existing cross-reference. Looking at the panel, we can see that the document already had a cross-reference inserted on page 7. This reference referred readers to page 12, which contains not just the Korean chicken recipe, but also a recipe for super fluffy rice. After speaking to my editor, however, they were concerned that directing the reader to a page that contained another recipe may be confusing. In light of this, I've gone ahead and created a new section called It Goes Great With. And this section contains a number of smaller recipes, such as rice, dumplings and sauces, which serve as additions to the original recipes. So, we need to make a change to the original cross-reference. I'll quickly navigate back to the reference. And this time, I'll right-click directly on the cross-reference field and choose Edit Cross-Reference. I'll keep the targeting options once again set to Paragraph and 01 Title. And I'll select the fluffy rice recipe from the options I have below, being careful to select the recipe from page 18 and not from page 12. I'll then delete the content from the text field and begin writing a new reference. I'll start by typing out the word C. I'll then add a section name subfield. Next, I'll type in the words found on. And lastly, I'll then reinstate the page number subfield. By using the section name subfield, we'll pull through the section name goes great with automatically into our reference. We can at any point use multiple subfields in the same reference. So once I'm happy with my targeting and my reference, I'll click OK to generate the reference. And there we go, we can see that the original reference has been overridden and is now pulling through the section name goes great with and the page number 18. The examples I've shown you up to this point have only targeted paragraph text. Cross references can also be created by targeting anchors. So I'll navigate once again to the Goes Great With section using the Pages panel, and this time I want to reference the teriyaki sauce recipe on the right hand side. And to do this, I'm going to create an anchor. We'll start by locating the anchors panel by going to Window, scrolling once again down to References, and selecting Anchors. We'll then use the anchors panel to create a new anchor targeting the orange rectangle running around the edge of the teriyaki sauce recipe. So I'll select the orange rectangle, and then from the Anchors panel, choose New Anchor. I'll rename the anchor Teriyaki Sauce, and then click OK. With my anchor now created, I can use this as a target when creating my cross-reference. So I'll locate where I want to insert my cross-reference. And I'll select the text I want to replace with the new cross-reference field. I'll then right-click and choose Insert Cross-Reference. This time I'll change the link to drop-down target from Paragraph to Anchor. I'll select the Teriyaki Sauce Anchor that we just created. And now we'll start again to populate our reference. 
I'll start by selecting the page number subfield and replacing it with an anchor name subfield. This will pull through the name of the anchor that was created earlier. I'll then type in recipe found in our and then I'll insert the section name subfield. Next, I'll type out section on page. And finally, we'll add in a final page number subfield to complete our reference. I'll double check the reference. And then once I'm happy, I'll select OK to generate the cross reference. And there we go. Once again, it's generated the cross reference and populated the text frame for me pulling through the anchor name, the section name, and the page number automatically. At any point, we can select a cross-reference from the cross-references panel and choose Go to Target to check that the reference is targeting the correct anchor or paragraph. So far in this video, I've been using the cross-reference functionality to create references in a magazine. However, cross-references are a tool often used in academic writing. So for this final example, I'm going to switch to a more academic style document. We have here the beginnings of a PhD thesis. And within this thesis, I want to cross-reference a diagram featured later on in the document. So I'll start by navigating to the page containing the diagram I want to reference. And to do this, we'll use the Pages panel and just simply double-click on page 7. I'll then select the diagram I want to target and create a new anchor using the Anchors panel. I'll name the anchor Figure 5, Electromagnetic Spectrum Diagram. And click OK to create the anchor. We can then navigate to where I want to insert the reference. Select the text I want to replace with the new field, right click and choose Insert Cross Reference. I can then target the anchor I have just created and begin populating the text input. In this example, I actually want to use the object description despite the fact that we've just named our anchor. This field will automatically pull through the object layer name. So to start, I'll type in bracket C. I'll then insert the object description subfield. I'll also then type in on page. And finally, I'll insert the page number subfield and an end bracket to end the reference. For this example, I'll also apply the emphasis character text style to help the reference stand out from the normal body text. Once I'm happy with my settings, we'll click OK to generate the reference. And there we go. We can see that the reference has been generated, pulling through the object's layer name and the page on which the diagram can be found. We could of course go back into our cross-reference and choose to save this format as a preset. And this would be useful if we're planning on referencing lots of different diagrams in the same way throughout our document. Finally, we could choose to export one of our documents using one of the digital PDF presets. So I'll go to File and choose Export. We'll then select PDF from the Export Format dropdown. And then under PDF Preset, select one of the two digital press options. Once selected, we can then click Export and choose somewhere for the document to be exported to. I'll then click Save to export the document. By selecting the digital presets, we have exported a PDF that is compatible with hyperlinks. So if I open the exported document, locate a reference and click on it, it will link us through to the cross-reference target. So that was how to use the cross-references feature in Affinity Publisher. I hope you found this interesting and thank you for watching.